tricart system and a case 2188 combine. Uh, you'll notice on the front center snout we have our tack sensor and it's just a bearing left from right. And that's an input to our system and we use that to guide it down the road. Inside the cab we have what we call our C-Box display where we go in and set up all our settings to gauge our system, uh, make any tuning adjustments to the system, calibrate the system. Uh, in addition, if, if you have an ISO virtual terminal supported display, like on a case combine, a Pro 600, Pro 700, with uh, ISO VT firmware, or uh, an Ag Leader Integra, or a John Deere uh, Green Star GS2 or GS3 display, you can display those same menus on a uh, I don't know, support and ISO display. And normal operation with this system, uh, there's a sensor put in place that measures pressure when you turn the steering wheel. Uh, it'll actually kick out the auto steer system. So when I grab the wheel, you'll hear the auto steer system beep twice, which signifies it's been disengaged. So if I grab the wheel, hear the disengagement beep. To re-engage it, I just need to push in on this dial, get a light coming on, and the auto steer will take over again. There's another function built into our system, it's called gap detection. It's a good example here. Uh, when you have a sprayer pass, it runs over a row, the system will actually detect when it doesn't see corn and guide off of just the one sensor on the one side. So you notice now what it's doing is it's filling in past data and it's using that information to guide off of just a single side. The way that can work is we have a calibration for our sensor to tell us when the sensor is earning corn. We call that our neutral position calibration. And based off of that calibration, we know when we don't see corn to ignore the sensor and use past data. With that function, as you can see, when you do have gaps in the corn, you will continue to track straight, follow off in one row, and not jump to try to split the difference. Once it's back in readable data, it goes back to using the data and comparing left and right again. Now you can see we have the same function now going off the right side. That's the right card user interface. See the top right corner says Combi. That means we use a combination of GPS and lift mode guides. So we turn around the headlamp over to GPS input and uh, track you back into the next pass and then switch back over to row guides afterwards. of GPS and row guides. So right now, right now we're in row guides mode, guiding off the sensor and the header. Shortly what we'll be doing is when we disengage in the headline, you'll hear the auto screw beep. It's going to switch to GPS and then it'll pull in with GPS. Your beep. Now it's steering on GPS. I engage it. Let it guide in. 
Add her on. Pull in with GPS. Once it's guiding in the row for a short bit, it switches automatically back to the sensors and it's guiding off the sensors again. Case 2188 combine. Underneath the cab, we have a uh, closed center load sense hydraulic valve. Uh, this component coming right here is a pressure sensor. It measures the load sense pressure between the steering orbital and the valve. The pressure goes up when you turn the steering wheel by hand. That sensor detects it. We use that sensor as an input to our system to dis engage, disable our auto steer. Most of the hose lines tee in up at the steering orbital up above. You probably can see those. Load sense from the orbital goes to the valve port and then from the valve to where the original load sense destination was. Up above, you can see some electrical connectors. That is the left and right steering coils. Universal kit, we added our uh, angle sensor. See here, just a rotary sensor mounted to the axle. And then it measures the uh, movement on the tie rod. That so measures left, right, and center point calibrations. We use that as an input to our system to steer straight. The controller is mounted inside the cab. The harness is routed out towards the right side of the cab and falls along the frame here and to the valve, back to the rear axle sensor, and also it follows up here to the uh, main connection point here for the meter house. You notice here, this is what we call our front plug. We also use a single six pin Deutsch connector here at times, and that's what goes up to the header. So you see some harness coiled up here, runs up through the header. Up on the header here, we have our tack sensor. Uh, we're in 22 inch rows. These paddles are actually uncut, which isn't a big issue. Just allows for uh, more contact with more stocks, gives us some more stable reading. Uh, we actually calibrate the sensors in this position so then when they get caught up on neighboring snouts, we know that we're not in corn and we can do the gap detection function like we normally would in a 30 or a cut sensor for 22 inch rows.